A quarter of adults in Britain are so obsessed with cleaning and tidying, they spend over four years of their waking lives on household chores, with many feeling compelled to abide by strict regimes and rituals. The shower curtain has to hang equidistant on either end from the wall. Inside the toaster, use the old toothbrush. You can get all the, the crumbs out. I call these my buffing socks. I literally go around and buff the floors really hard. But for most of us, keeping our homes clean and tidy is not a priority, with 42% of Brits never cleaning their house from top to bottom. Oh, my God, it's a dead mess. And only a third of us washing our hands after we use the toilet. Oh! Literally, a part of me has just died inside. It's just horrendous. Can a group of obsessive cleaners transform the habits of a nation? You can't even get the door open, can you? You've got a um, dog-free system. This is the stuff I'm having to deal with. I think I'll knock with my feet. Or will changing the lives of those with a very different attitude to cleanliness prove too much for the people whose need for perfection... Oh, God. It makes, it's making me itch. How are you coping with this? ...has become an obsession. I just feel so dirty. I feel vile. They're all over the work surface and it's just something that I, I couldn't deal with. There is actually poo. It's absolutely disgusting. It's making me feel sick. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to get out. I have to clean the door handles probably anything up to 200 times a day. If I hear the children moving around the house and other rooms, I will get up and go and wipe the handles of the rooms that they've been in. 39 year old Louise from Royston, Harpertshire, is a single mother of two who spends over 40 hours a week keeping her three bedroom bungalow immaculate. I think it's about presenting perfection, that my home is perfect and ready at any time. You know, if we're gonna have a fire, then we're going down good. Diagnosed with OCD in 2011, Louise spends 200 pounds a month just on cleaning products. I live in a house with boys, and most women, their bugbear is the toilet seat being left up. I love it being up because that means my family don't have to touch this. They can just come in here, pee in the toilet straight in, and I can wipe it. And I don't want them touching that. My OCD started at the age of 21 when I joined the prison service. Um, I went to work at Wormwood Scrubs, which is an old Victorian jail, and every day I had to work in an environment where there was rats and drug users and dirt and grime. Louise's children know only too well how much of a priority cleaning is. Archie, what are you doing? Well, why do we come? We don't come in with shoes on, do we? Right, so why are you doing that? Right, well, come on then, you know. Hi, George, how are you? See, George knows. He's not even mine. The OCD, you can't stop yourself. The, the urge and compulsion is so great. I couldn't expose myself to scenarios and, and behave in any other way. Louise hopes by coming to the aid of someone in need of order will also help control her own compulsions. Just taking a few essentials with me that I know I wouldn't be able to survive without. So um, these are my cloths, anti-back wipes and a little bit of polish. So that's what will get me through the clean over the coming days. Louise will be travelling 50 minutes across the Hertfordshire border to this new build home in Ely, Cambridgeshire, to someone with a completely different set of standards. I'm feeling quite anxious. My stomach feels quite knotted. You're entering someone else's space, space that I'm not in control of. That's really, really daunting. Really, really daunting. Fifty-eight-year-old vintage clothing trader Sarah lives by herself, but shares a home with 15 years worth of clutter. I would describe myself as a womble. I will see something in a skip and I will go and get it and I will think of a use for it. So this is my front door behind these coats. I don't use my front door, I haven't used it for 15 years. Where would the coats go? Sarah has filled her two-bedroom home with over 1,000 dresses, 50 coats and countless accessories. Clothes, clothes, clothes. I started a business two years ago and I intended to get rid of much of the clutter that had accumulated. 
the irony is that in fact I've brought in more stock and that that's now smothering me. Sarah's 15 years worth of clutter has taken over her home so much that she hasn't been able to sleep in her own bedroom for two years. This is my living room, but it's now turned into my bedroom because both the bedrooms upstairs are completely full. With Sarah's collection and her stock taking over the house, her hoard has now spread into three sheds and a gazebo. Having stuff not just in the house, but now creeping out into the garden is where I realised that I had a problem. With all the rooms now full to bursting point and feeling overwhelmed, Sarah knows she needs help. There's obviously a lot of attachment to a lot of these things, which is making it difficult for me. It's a block for me. So I do need someone to come in and help me clear the clutter. OK, so this is the kitchen, okay. which you can guess because there's a cooker. This is sort of redundant stuff that's either come back from the antique place or it's stuff that I think I will need at some point. So, I mean, I can't even get to the windows to clean no, no. them. Um, OK, so this is the sitting room. OK. And um, it's the sitting room, but at the moment it doubles up as my bedroom. I'm sleeping on the sofa. I've always had a double bed, so I'm, I'm amazed that I'm sleeping comfortably. On it's almost a like you've conditioned yourself mm. to the small amount of yeah, space you've allowed yourself to have. Which is a little have. bit worrying. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine living a functional life in such a limited amount yeah. of space. That's all you can do. It reminds me of being I can in function. a prison cell. I'm really sorry, yeah, sir. No, I just no, need five seconds of air. I'm amazed how Sarah's conditioned herself to live in such a confined area, and I find it really oppressive. It's almost like there's no space to breathe. That's a warehouse, isn't it? That's what it is. It's a warehouse. It's not a home. Hello. Are you all right? Yes, thank yeah, you. You feel OK? I yeah. do. OK, so we're, we're going upstairs to the bedroom now. In fact, you won't be able to get in there. <laughs> oh, God. That Your was my bedroom, which is why I'm sleeping on the sofa. So... God, I mean, see, again, I feel like I, it's shortness of breath. It's the lack of yeah, yeah. space. Yeah. So then this is the... This is my daughter's ex-bedroom. OK. And uh, this, is, this is the room that I'd planned as a storage room. Is this a bed under here, Sarah? That's the bed on top, and that's clothing from there to there. You've got us like a warren in there, Sarah. No kidding. And all of it is going to be a memory of a date or like, yeah. an event or something. Now she's seen the scale of the task, OCD diagnosed Louise wants to give Sarah an insight into her own cleaning routine. I have to clean my house from top to bottom every morning. I get up at half past five. <gasps> Um, everything is wiped. The floors are wiped, the floors are hoovered, all the surfaces are wiped, the windows are clean, the beds are made. That will happen again yeah, you still got to in the thorough. afternoon once the boys have come in from school and then they're starting oh, to cool. play and I'm getting tea ready, then it starts again. And I don't feel I can start my day mm -hmm. until I've done that, till everything's in order, everything's clean and as it should be. When she described to me what she was doing every day, it felt like a prison sentence because I, you know, I would feel that was a punishment if somebody said I had to do that every day. As I was going through her house, I was looking at items and thinking, there's dirt, and as we pull that out, what am I going to encounter? I can't believe how long I've spent in Sarah's house today. I was itching to get out of there. Seven in ten Brits are unable to find the time to take care of everyday chores such as vacuuming and dusting. But there's a group of individuals so obsessed with cleaning, their need for tidiness and order affects every aspect of their lives. 32-year-old forecast analyst Adam from Essex lives his life in complete order. I tend to not have any sort of electronic clutter, so if someone calls me or I have a missed call or I've called someone, I will delete that on my call register straight away. I've got a thing about even numbers, um, so volumes um, on TV will always be on even numbers. Um, it drives me mad when someone puts it on old, actually. 
Adam spends up to 20 hours a week cleaning his minimalistic one-bedroom flat, and his obsession with cleanliness doesn't go unnoticed by his friends. Why do you have to be so anal, Ed? I just... I don't think it's... I don't think it is like... I just think it's being, you know, tidiness and neatness. To me, it makes sense. Adam's very particular in how he likes to keep his, his place. When we've been drinking before, before we've even been ready to go out, um, he gives us plastic cups to drink out of um, to save himself washing up so he can just throw them away. The way I view my home is it's like my kingdom, so when I get in my door, I shut, shut away the world in some respects, and everything I know is in the right place, everything's where I want it to be. Adam spends 30 minutes a day ensuring his picture frames are straight and an exact distance apart. This is something that I regularly do, is straighten up these, these photos. Um, actually drives me crazy. With these pictures as well, I have them a certain distance apart. I will make sure there's always an inch and a half to an inch and three quarter gap between each one. I do try to have as little as around me as possible. Some people would say, oh, it doesn't make a place homely then or, you know, cosy or anything. But to me, I think the opposite, because I think if you have too much around you, it becomes a bit like a rubbish dump. Adam's heading off to Rochester, Kent, to confront his fear of chaos as he tries to bring order to someone else's home. I think if things are chaotic around you, then I think yourself as a person will be chaotic. So I think I can show them how, by being a bit more neat, tidy and clean, that they will obviously um, feel better in themselves. Adam will have just four days to help someone whose attitude to cleanliness is very different to his own. Thirty-eight-year-old single mother Lara lives with her two daughters, Tree and Isla. Their three-bedroom house hasn't had a deep clean for 12 years. When it comes to the grill and the oven bit, I tend to let it get quite... I don't know, I just don't clean it. There's more important things in life, like living and spending time with my kids, and, yeah, it's not my top priority. Lara also can't resist salvaging people's unwanted items. Bin day is brilliant for finding things. I walk around a lot locally and the, there's just things outside people's houses. This sofa initially came from the pub next door. They were throwing it out. This table here was at in somebody's rubbish. And then behind the sofa, there's camping gear, there's bags. I find that because there's limited storage everywhere in the house, that the kitchen sort of spills out into the bathroom. I have got coffee. There was no space in the cupboards. A jar of pickled onions. My pickled onions have been there for quite a long time now, probably over a year. In fact, I didn't pickle onions last year. I did them the year before, so they're over a year. Lara feels the clutter was a contributing factor to the breakdown of her marriage two years ago. Although we argued, and that was the main reason he left, and he wanted to take that away from the children, he also said that the amount of clutter, it was always a bone of contention. It always got to him. But I think I'm all about building a better me at the moment. And to make the house less cluttered would, I don't know, feel freer, feel nicer. Hello, come Hello. on in. Hello, hi, I'm Adam. Right, I'm Lara. How you doing, Lara? <laughs> OK, wow. Um... Got quite a bit of stuff, haven't you? Yes. I'm trying to picture what your house is like at this moment. Not like this. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, crazy. Um, I just I have to straight, <laughs> straighten that. Um, I've, I've got a thing about things being straight yeah, and, par and I understand. like kind of like right angles and I've put them at just the wrong place haven't I so they don't quite sit properly so much to take in um quilt is it does it yeah, serve any kind yeah. of purpose yeah. there yeah. Or? It, it serves as a dumping ground for, for things that you want to hand every now and again this end of the room is more of a sort of dining room end you usually have this much stuff in the dining room and I've just noticed something on the floor as well um is that like some sort of hamster or jerk? That is or a something? hamster. Near, near, near the food as well. No, not near the food. Food's there. Uh, I don't have food on the floor. Do you have food on the floor? To me, food, cupboard, um, pet, near. Uh, it's... Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're. I don't think you're alone then. Right. This is the kitchen. Okay. Kind of a bit worried to open the oven, but wow. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Just looks like everything is kind of 
stained a hole inside of your microwave. I can feel your disgust. It's just hard for me to kind of take in. Um, <sighs> okay. Right, this is the bathroom and a lot of my kitchen things ended up spilling out into the bathroom. A bit strange, okay. <sighs> Do you find it difficult with you and the children living this way or have you kind of got used to it? This is my life. This is how it is. Hoping to inspire Laura, Adam's keen to show her photos of his own minimalist home. This is the kitchen to my right. flat. You can see like I've got a bread board and some scales there mm -hmm. and they're all at right angles. This is inside of one of my food cupboards. If someone's moved something in this cupboard, you would know. I would know. Tweaking things, cleaning things every single time, I would find that hard. Absolutely. I can't understand how you can mm. live with a kitchen like that. If you were to make it that minimalist, I would lose the personality that it's got. You can still force your personality upon this house and people can still come in and go, oh, yeah, this is Laura's house, mm. but this is not like that. This is not Laura's house. This is mm -hmm. more like this house owns you. Adam's life sounds hard work. I'm happy to have routines and keep my house tidy and tidier than it currently is, but I could no way live the way he lives. Um, wow. Um... That was quite uncomfortable. There's a hell of a lot of clutter. Um, photos aren't straight. A lot of dust. It's just bedlam. One in 50 people in Britain is diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. For some, this can manifest itself in an obsessive fear of germs. I take two sandwich bags, I put one on each hand, and then I'll clean. Although we come into contact with millions of harmless bacteria every day, for germaphobes with a fear of contamination, all bacteria can be terrifying. You're going to die. Mum of three, Hayley from Sussex, was diagnosed with OCD in 2007. Her obsessional behaviour currently manifests itself with ritualistic cleaning to eradicate germs. Throughout my life, I've had different forms of the OCD. Sometimes I might get intrusive thoughts. I fear that if I don't carry out these rituals that my children will die. So for me, the important thing to confront my fears. The more I do that, it makes me have control over the illness as opposed to it having control over me. Today, OCD diagnosed Haley, Leslie, Tuesday and germophobic Vinnie are confronting their collective fear of germs by coming into close contact with others on a pampering day out. I'm at a stage where my OCD is managed, but other people may not be, so it would be nice to help them and for me to see them improve. I think it will be really beneficial. Shall I just lay? Yeah, just lay here? with your head here, you'll be fine. Oh, God. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Mm. So it's going to feel a bit, little bit warm. Just want you to keep your eyes closed for me. Haley and Vinny regularly visit beauty salons, but for recently OCD diagnosed Tuesday and Leslie, their fear of coming into contact with people has prevented them from ever visiting a salon. I've never been into a place like this. Yeah. You know, and I wouldn't. Wouldn't you? No, no. Before I got on the bed, mm. I was a bit like, my hands were a bit fidgety and I felt a bit like, oh, God. Most salons in the UK follow strict hygiene protocols, specifying that they must wash hands and sanitise all equipment between clients. I go through the same routine pretty much every single day. I do my ears, I do my eyebrows, go out for waxing. And when going out for eyebrow waxing, I've walked in some places where I've just I've screamed at me and I've walked out. The biggest thing for me is the wax box. I'm looking at it now and my OCD is going 100 miles an hour. But because it's at a certain temperature, there will be no germs in it, because remember, germs can't live in certain temperatures. OK, OK. Yeah. I mean, guys, do you feel like you need to swap? Well, I feel OK, because, like, Donna used a new stick, like, on my eyes, and I just... And, like, she antibacked her hands as well. Tuesday, what about you? I'm OK to not swap things. I'm fine with it as well. Well, that is what I call a major breakthrough. Yeah. The salon, however, was independently swabbed with the table, wax pot and dryer overall scoring 167. 
way below the 500 mark considered clean enough to eat your dinner off. Bye. 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 Having waxed, the group move on to a nail bar. By doing this and pushing myself to all these boundaries, I think it's going to help me to sort of gain control of the OCD more rather than it control me. This is the first time ever I've been to one of these places. I've never ever had my nails done before. There are millions of germs living on our skin. Proper hand washing reduces bacteria levels by up to 99.9%. However, Germaphobe Tuesday avoids touching most surfaces and still washes her hands up to 60 times a day. I have um, OCD with germs, okay. and um, they make like I'm, I'm a major like hand washer. I just don't do this ever. Like nobody touches me. I do, and I I do my best. Even standing like too close to people, I always try to take a step back. I'm still getting over the fact that woman's holding your hand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you're not reeling back and hyperventilating. <laughs> the sort of nervousness and the germ thing is is obviously still there. But because I'm in, it's just the thought of having nice nails and having like a little treat. All you've got to do now is sit and wait for them to dry and then you're done. OK then, okay. lovely. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I absolutely I'm love so them. proud of you. Buoyed by the cleanliness of the salon, the group decide not to swab again. The nail clippers, file and table independently scored a hygienic 130 overall. He was so, so like brave today, do it, taking that step. And before I were done, I think we've done really good, though. I'm very, very proud of you, and I think you've done very well today. Next, Leslie attempts her first professional haircut for 30 years. Do you want it on? No, no, no. You're OK. I'm going to do it. OK. I was thinking maybe if we started here... Right. ..and then we worked our way right the way around the kitchen, right. so at least we got you back ownership of this space. In Cambridgeshire, OCD-diagnosed Louise is on her second day taking on an ambitious four rooms in Sarah's house, which haven't had a deep clean in seven years. How are you with dried flowers? I just think they collect dust. Oh dear, they do. C could we keep the roses and get rid of the twiggy ones? Okay. If you let me keep the ones yeah, that are yeah. here already... Yep, yeah, I like those ones around. That's it, we don't need any more. Vintage stall owner Sarah has spent years rescuing objects. The clutter has not only taken over a house, but three sheds and a gazebo in the garden. Do you know where the bases of these are? Because otherwise, let's bin, bin them like these. No, they're new. They've only just come into the house, those. Put them over here for now. That I bought for here and it doesn't work, so... If it doesn't work, can we bin it then if it doesn't that work? That can go to... No, it's oh, brand new. Oh, OK. It doesn't work for me. We've got a big skip there to fill, Sarah. We, we need have... to be a bit more ruthless. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have to get tough. In her own home, Louise wipes her door handles up to 200 times a day and dedicates 40 hours a week keeping her home immaculate. I'm going to make one point. I'm going to yeah. make it as politely yeah. as I can, yeah. Sarah, OK? When I come into your home... Remember, I'm challenging all of my Indeed, fears, yeah. but then I feel that you're not doing it right. back. Yeah. I'm challenging me, but you have to push yourself and say, no, so I am going to bin that. I've got a whole bundle of stuff out there that's going to charity. There's a whole load of stuff in the skip. There's a whole load of stuff here that's just going to get swept up and put in the yeah. bin. So as far as I'm concerned, we've actually made huge progress. Yeah. I think there was a little bit of a crisis in there for Lou and I think it was because as far as she could see everything she held up was useful. Well, yeah, I could have told her that before we started. Sarah doesn't want me to touch the things in that room at all. She wants to tell me what's going, what's going to our room and what's where. And what I feel for her is, is are we then going to be just moving the items around the house rather than addressing the task in hand, which is actually trying to condense what's in this house. I feel mentally drained today. I feel like I've been the whipping boy for Sarah. In Rochester, obsessive cleaner Adam will be taking on three rooms in single mother Lara's house. OK, so today yeah. I'm thinking that um, we should start having a look at the kitchen. 
Right. So I think we need to kind of define, you know, what is your kitchen and what's your dining room, um, because at the moment it's kind of a bit of a mixture. Vara's kitchen hasn't had a deep clean for 12 years. OK, this says March 2006. Out of date. Out of date. That bothers me. Why does it bother you? Explain. Because it's... Because it's... That's not out of date. Sugar. Sugar doesn't go off. They have an expiry date for a reason. I remember you've got some strange yeah. stuff in your bathroom. Can we maybe have a look at trying to get some of that back in the kitchen? Okay. Sorry, what's what's the pickled onions? Okay. They're not fresh anymore. In his own home, Adam calls out of date food from his cupboards weekly. Oh my lord. Soy sauce is a strong smell. Where to put it? Mm. I am gonna have to get some air because that smell is just making me feel a bit sick. Um, to be honest, so I'm just gonna leave you to clear that up. If that's all Thank right. You. <sighs> I can breathe. There's a real a smell of damp and dust and mould and it's... I just needed to come out here for a bit to get a bit of fresh air because it's, it's not nice. Adam is really struggling with this. He's, he's really struggling with the fact that I keep everything past its sell-by date. I personally don't have the same problem. After 20 minutes outside, Adam is determined to brave the house again. Oh. So, it still really kind of smells in here, doesn't it? He turns his attention to the fridge and oven, which haven't had a thorough clean in over a decade. Prepare yourself. OK. Oh, my God. It's a dead mouth. That's... That's... Yeah, that's gross. OK. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I find that a bit uneasy, to be honest, and a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Today, um, the only way I can describe it in word has been hell. We found some dead mice underneath the fridge, and I just couldn't understand how people can have dead mice in their kitchen and not know about it. It was just a nightmare. I do live in a terraced house. They're, they are riddled with mice. It is a nightmare trying to keep them out. There are lots and lots of tiny holes. It's not good, though, is it? With just two days left of the clean in Cambridgeshire, the skip is only a quarter full. God, blimey, I couldn't do this every day to find something. Keen to make Sarah's home as clutter-free as possible, OCD-diagnosed Louise is helping sort the back room where no one has been able to sleep for nearly 10 years. That's staying, that one. This one's staying. Sarah's struggling to part with a hoard which is so vast it's even taken over her own bedroom. Louise's plan is to make the back room a stock room so Sarah can finally get to her bed after being on the couch for two years. This is a relationship I had oh with my someone. God, really? I kept loads and loads of things in a drawer, yeah. you know, all our dates, everything oh. we went on. <sighs> Come on, should we have a hug? Come Yay. on. <laughs> this is, it's all right to cry, Sarah. It really is all right to cry. And, and you are going to feel this emotions. You're never going to address this without oh. not crying. You're no. never going to come in and just be, that is not going to happen. In her own home, Louise spends six hours a day keeping a house perfectly ordered and regularly gets rid of any unwanted items. Are you keeping these cushions? Uh, that one can go on the bed. <sighs> You've got yeah. about five cushions downstairs. You've got one sofa. We can free up some more of that space by getting some of that up here. Are you all right? Yes. Did you drop it? Yes. Did it Come break? Down. It's not a panic. I'm just trying to sort of get in my head now where we go. Yeah. 
with our plan because I, I get I, I feel like now I'm penned back into the corner. You're feeling claustrophobic. I am feeling really. As well. I feel like I I'm going to burst into go, tears. I think you go outside for a while. I can't bear yeah. it. Sorry. You go outside for a while. I've got to get out. out. The next bit. Oh, no space anywhere. <laughs> That it took every inch of me to be in there today. Every inch of me to be in there today. <sighs> Can't you see that that is not the way to live? But then, um, is it my way that's not the way to live? I don't know. Where's the balance? Where's the balance? Sorry, Sarah, it's the space. It's a lot of space for yeah. me. When you think that there's a fraction of what was in the room when we started now, so it's all progress, you know. It's but that's you. But do you know what I feel like? I feel like you don't hear my voice. I do hear your voice. You don't do. hear I my hear, voice. I do. I hear you doing this. You're not lot. hearing it. I do hear you. You don't, this, Sarah. This process. Oh, I've had three this days process, in here listening yeah, to you. And this process is about you being on a journey and wanting not to be you're the way you are. You're on a journey as well. Yes, and I have given me. masses today. And I have. Do you think go I'm and not look at that nothing? Skin. And see what I've, I've done. Given nothing. That's not the point. We have met in the middle, and we should appreciate that. But what you keep doing is making oh, me do you know come what? round. I don't need somebody to keep telling me. I haven't play, kept play, telling play. you. This is the first time I've spoken. It's the first time because I'm fed well, up. Then we'll the throw it. Throw the it. Throw it. Throw I'm going it, to. Come I'm on, going throw it, to. Throw it all. The clock is ticking. We've got a grown-up job to do. Let's get on and do it. That's a what I've got to say. Yeah, we have. Well, do you know what? Chuck some stuff out your house then. Yeah, I have. For Christ's sake. I have. Sake. Go and look in that skip. Now I have had enough. How rude. How rude. The point of this process is not to tell Sarah that she's a dreadful hoarder and everything's got to go in the skip. It's not about making my house look like hers. She's in my house. The average person comes into contact with millions of germs every day. For the vast majority of healthy people, this isn't an issue. But for some sufferers of OCD, this can be a challenge. For someone with OCD, it's very much like you're not OK, something bad's going to happen to you, you've got germs all over you now, you're going to get sick. Today, Hayley and the group are accompanying OCD-diagnosed Leslie, who is undertaking a major challenge, visiting a hair salon for the first time in 30 years. Due to her fear of contamination, Leslie always keeps her hair short and shaves her face daily to ensure it's bacteria-free. Everything about my life is OCD. I'm tormented all the time, and that's why I want to do this so as I can have a bit more life. I mean, I've been stuck in the house for nearly 20, 25 years. I've got to put that on? Yeah, please, because I don't want it to go on your clothes. Nobody else has wore it? No. OK. Can't, can't, do you talk? Do you want to take it off? Do you not want it on? Do you want it off? No, no, no. You're okay. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Just give me a minute. You're doing well. Come on, let me walk you over. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> can we just like crack on? I want to do it because I haven't done it for so long. Ignore the tears. Let's do it. I'm not going to die. All right. Yeah, go. You OK? Yeah, yeah. All right. Trying to control the OCD monster mm. and do it, you know. I'm so proud of Leslie. I think she's doing amazing. I'm, I'm still shaking, but, like, controllably shaking. Yeah. You might not feel it now, mm. but the more you keep pushing your boundaries, you will get to a point where the yeah. OCD doesn't rule your life anymore. Yeah. Do you want to have a look? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on then. It's a better shape now, isn't it? It's round. It looks lovely. Are you proud of yourself? You are. I can see it in your yeah. face. I've done it now. I'm so proud. As well as braving her first haircut in 30 years, Leslie decided she didn't want to swap the hair salon, but independently tested, the scissors, comb and chair scored a sanitary 92. I've done it and I am thinking about the next time, whereas, you know, I haven't thought about it for 30 years. And now I've done it, I feel a bit silly because of all the fuss I actually caused. 
Uh, but I'm glad I've done it, you know. In Rochester, it's the third day of the clean. With the kitchen sorted, single mother Lara is parting with some of her salvaged items to create some space in her living room. How would you feel about losing one of these cabinets or possibly both these cabinets? I really love these. I'm kind of being quite strong on that. I think you could have a better, more cleverer way of storing something. Let's do it, and I don't, want to, I don't want to dwell on it because it's making me sad. What are we going to do about the cushions, Laura? They definitely need cleaning, I'm with that, and this sofa seems smaller, so perhaps there isn't as much room. I'm finding it hard. Why is that? Why is that? Because everything is changing. Hardly anything is mine. We're taking a long time to make decisions over, over mm. what I consider to be very little things. Yeah, I'll go with it. OK. You're going to put them in the wash, wicked. So the others we can get rid of, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. I'm finding choices being made for me hard. I'm finding letting go hard. I'm hoping that when the dust settles, I will come to terms with it and be a much happier person for having all the space that I've gained. More stuff for the skip. Lara's living room hasn't been decluttered since the breakdown of her marriage two years ago. I feel like I'm being ungrateful. I feel like I'm coming across as a, a spoilt brat, and I don't mean to be. I'm just overwhelmed, I think, with how it's worked. It's hard for me to understand someone who kind of gets so attached to a piece of furniture. The chest of drawers, I can picture it living in our old flat and a, a sharing music. We, we were pulling out the drawers and just really happy family times. Me and my husband, before we had the kids, and that's gone now, and now it's literally gone out the door. It's gone. I'm not, I'm not asking you to erase their memories. I'm well, just... the memories won't go, will they? But the, the, the reminders will go, because that piece of furniture won't remind me of those emotions again. In Rochester, it's the final day of Lara's first deep clean in 12 years. They filled a skip and said goodbye to the bacteria-ridden sofa. Adam wants to leave Lara with some of his own finishing touches. Put this one up here, and then you can pass me the other one up. Okay. Okay, do they look level to you? Yeah. See, I have a thing in my flat where all the pictures um, I have up have to be level. Um, okay. Because to me, it just looks aesthetically right. Mm -hmm. um, if they're all at different heights, it makes no sense to me. Should we um, make a start on the bookshelf as well then? OK. I just don't like the whole fact that it's not flush. I hate this book. What's this book all about? It needs to be cut, honestly. You're making me smile, Adam. Why? Because it's, it's obsessive. Do you think? I do. I, I, I can see that it will look very aesthetically pleasing once it's finished, but I think it's obsessive. Perfect. Oh. With the living room in order, Adam and Lara give the house a final once-over, ready to show Lara's daughters, Tree and Isla, the finished result. Four days ago, Lara's living room lacked space and order. Hello, you. What do you think? Mm, that's a new sofa. That's so much bigger. Do you like the idea of it being bigger and new? Yeah, it's nice. So what's behind the sofa? Nothing. <laughs> you haven't got anything behind the sofa. You can tell your yeah. mummy off if she lets it get dirty again. <laughs> Lara's dining room was claustrophobic and lacked proper storage. Now it's a place they can eat comfortably in as a family. Ah. <laughs> It's all like neat and tidy. They're stored away and they're not in a massive box. Mm. They must have taken you a long time to organise. <laughs> was it hard for you doing all this? We let go of a lot of things and that's, that for me was really hard. I think the furniture was the biggest thing. A lot of things are gone. <laughs> oh. The kitchen hadn't had a deep clean in 12 years. 
taken over by ground in dirt and out of date food. With Adam's help, the whole room has become spotless and hygienic. Hey. You got the, the surface is clear, new microwave. Clear. Right, should we have a look in the oven? Do you remember what it looked like in here? It's clean. A lot of hard work was put into that. A hell of a lot of hard work. <laughs> I'm really proud of my house now. It's been well worth it. It's been a harrowing experience at times, but it's paid off. I'd like to think Laura will take away a lot of stuff which I've kind of told her over the last few days. Um, for me personally, I'm not too sure I'll take too much away from it, only the fact that I'm going to keep my place even more clean and tidy. Um, I never want to see the sort of dirt and grime that I saw at Lara's. It's the last day of the clean in Cambridgeshire, and after yesterday's disagreement, Louise has decided to return to Sarah's. You know, I've been pushing my OCD every day. I've stood in someone else's dirt. I've stood in a claustrophobic space. I've choked on dust. Um, and basically, I'm going to push myself today to go back in there and see if I can challenge it one more time. Morning, Sarah. Hello, right. Lou. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that you're back. Thank you know, I'm glad was... that you've let me come back in. Yeah, oh, home. definitely. Yeah. I want to finish the process with yeah, you. Yeah. I think what I'm we delighted started, about that. Yeah. Um, I think I would be cheating myself, and I wouldn't want to let you down if I hadn't come back and finish what we set out to yeah, achieve. And I thought about you all night. Me too. And I'd like to end. <laughs> I'd like to end your friend yeah. as well. So shall we hug now? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> with the air cleared, the ladies go into overdrive. <laughs> They've got just four hours to put the final touches to the house, ready to show Sarah's friend Janet the finished result. I see Sarah every day because I'm her post lady, but the last time I actually went into the house for a coffee was oh, two years ago at Christmas, I believe, and I've not been in since. The house was filled with Sarah's 15 years of clutter and hadn't had a deep clean for seven years. It's taken Louise and Sarah four days, but finally her home is up to par. Difference. <laughs> this is unrecognisable as the same house. The main thing that's changed in here is the volume of stuff that was in here. And you can see all the surfaces. You couldn't see a surface in here before, so yeah. And you're not to bring any more post. <laughs> not the past <laughs> kind. The floor to ceiling clutter in the living room where Sarah had been sleeping for the last two years has been removed. It's now an inviting and warm space, perfect for entertaining. So this is the living room where you were here having a drink. <laughs> oh, Sarah! Years ago. <laughs> it looks wonderful, absolutely wonderful. You know, obviously over the last two years it changed and stock was just getting dumped in here. And Recently it's just been all yeah, full of clothes yeah, yeah, and yeah, rails. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, I just... Uh, it's beautiful now. It's so. lovely. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this Christmas. I've missed our little get-togethers. Uh, <laughs> you really have. Well, we can have so them again nice. now. And we can do them, yeah, yeah. do them regularly. Sarah's vintage clothes stock had taken over her bedroom, making it uninhabitable. Now it's a place she can finally sleep and relax in. <laughs> Sarah! <laughs> now you can see your bed! This is excellent, absolutely yeah, excellent. Yeah. That's a lovely cover this, on your lovely bed. This is <laughs> the loveliest bedroom I've ever had. Oh, and yeah. This, you know, to get this back is just... And not to have had this for oh, so yeah. long. I mean, I haven't been able to even look over there. The curtains have been closed, couldn't get to the curtains. No, it's lovely. It's lovely to have it yeah. back again. Let me show you the last room and see what we've achieved. This I really need to see, Sarah. And finally, Sarah's back bedroom was previously chaotic, filled to the brim with unused items and boxes. Now it's a place to store vintage clothes stock, leaving the rest of the house clutter-free. 
So Janet, this is um, Sarah's workspace that we've created. I mean, obviously there's still quite a high volume of stock in here, but we've had a good sort through. We've got it all up here, all packed. And this is an ongoing project for Sarah now. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. You've certainly been busy. Gonna leave you with this project. Yes. See you later. Yeah, you take care. Best Lovely. of luck. Thanks for all you have. Nice to meet you, Lynn. Nice Thank, Thank you for helping my friend. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> take care, Lou. See you later. Bye. Being around that amount of stuff for that length of time was a real challenge, but I got through it and I'm at the end and I'm just so proud of myself. I feel as if I've been rescued from a downward spiral that I was on. And if, if we hadn't addressed this now and given me the chance to start again, it's given me a resolve not to ever let it get, ever let it get anything like the way it was before. I've challenged my OCD, I've subjected myself to an extreme environment, and when I go back home, I'm gonna continue with that positive process and just keep challenging the OCD and stop cleaning and spend more time with my kids. Next time on Obsessive Compulsive Cleaners... Come on, let's be a bit ruthless, Dusty. Come on, let's, let's live know, life... Whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm whoa. Joking. This is like modern-day living. I want to die tomorrow. You and I are women of a certain age. We don't wear fairy cardigans. Oh, my God. There is poo. There is actually poo.